Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Amazon African Motives, uh, still working on all level mate. We have, in this case, we've got uh, the question paper, uh, which was actually written in uh, June 2011. Okay, so uh, I just want us to actually work out this and uh, see what you're going to have. It's paper one and uh, it's actually two hour, 30 minutes paper. Uh, so make sure that you read everything guys on your instructions here. Make sure that uh, the instructions, uh, you read uh, all of them, especially on the omission of essential uh, working, which will result in loss of marks and also the degree of accuracy. Whenever it is not exact, you should give your answer correct to three significant figures unless stated otherwise. So uh, that's it guys. And this is paper one, no calculators, which means everything it's supposed to be done without a calculator. Okay, so we shall quickly rush through the questions and see what we got here. Uh, the first question was to simplify. So definitely for you to simplify, you have to give your answer in exact form. That is uh, in exact form in this case. And the fraction must be uh, in its simplest form. That is what they mean in this case. So here we've got uh, the fractions which are on top which is a two over three. So what you're just going to do is to work them out separately. This part means the same as a two over three uh, plus in this case, three over four. So you can write it this way uh, and divide like this uh, to one and one over six of which if you multiply this, you're gonna have a six plus one, which is going to be seven over six like this. So that is what it simply means. And you know your board mass, guys, uh, from your board mass, uh, that means we have to start by expanding uh, the brackets first uh, before we do anything. So we've got the brackets here. And what we have in the brackets, we are adding. So we're going to find the LCM or the LCD of three and uh, four, which is in this case, three times, uh, which is just 12 here. That's the smallest number that we can use. So if we divide 12, divide by three, here is going to give us four uh, and we multiply it to two, which is going to give us eight. So this is eight uh, plus eight divided by four, uh, 12 here, yeah, sorry, 12 divided by four, which is three and the three multiplied by three, just to multiply the numerator here, which is going to give us nine. Uh, everything that we get here must be divided to seven over six. All right, so let's add this. It's going to be 17, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be 17 over uh, 12. So that's what you're going to have. And you are dividing. So what do you do? Uh, remember that whenever you're dividing, you have to make sure that you introduce, in this case, uh, multiplication. Okay, I thought I changed the marker, but in, in, anyways, uh, that would be a multiplication sign. And the moment you introduce multiplication, that means you have to invert uh, the second fraction. Uh, here, you have to interchange uh, this fraction. So that's mean, uh, that means at this stage, you can actually perform uh, your divisions uh, by dividing this six into six, that's one, uh, six into 12 here, that's two. So uh, if I am to multiply properly, because like, as I can see here, we can't reduce anything further. So you can simply multiply 17 times one in this case, which is 17 over uh, two times seven, which is 14, okay. So that's what you're going to have. And uh, 14 into 17, that is one. And you're going to have a remainder of three. So this is going to be three over 14. Okay, so that's what we obtained, guys, for this. And it's actually uh, three marks for that, as you can see. Uh, that is three marks. So they can ask a question of that nature, depending with what you're given. Um, that's what, what you simply do. Express the ratio 20 minutes. Here we are given the ratio of 20 minutes as to one and a third hours in the simplest form. So whenever we are working with ratio, these are minutes. So convert these hours to minutes, whereby we know that in an hour here, we've got 60 minutes. So we know that in an hour, uh, there we have co uh, got complete uh, 60 minutes in this case. All right, so what about a third? Because we are left with a third of an hour here. So that means a third of an hour, that is a third times 60 minutes. So this is going to give us 20 here. So uh, a third gave us 20 minutes, but we had one hour, which is represented by 60 minutes. So we have to add uh, these two to add uh, this, we are going to obtain uh, 80 
minutes in this case. All right, so that means one and a third hours is equivalent to 80 minutes. So this ratio can be written here as 20 minutes. Make sure you are having minutes here as to 80 minutes. So it must be minutes versus minutes so that you'll be able to what? You'll be able to cancel the minutes and the minutes out and you can reduce also here. Uh, you can cancel the zero out, the zero out, two into two, that is one as two, two into eight, which is four. So it's going to give us one as to four. So it depends if the question was to for you to write this as a ratio, as a fraction, they can ask you to express your answer in the form of A over B like this, which means this was going to be one over four. So like I said, it depends with the question that you're given. But in this case, we have to write this the way that it is given here uh, on that part. OK, there are two partners, A and B, and they shared their profits. So these are two businessmen and they have got to share their profits in a business in the ratio of five as to three. So so this is A as to uh, B. So our A is the one that is going to have five parts and the B is the one that is going to have three parts. That is A as to B. And B receives 4,800,000. Calculate A is here. So B is the one that we are given with a three. So according to three, uh, this A got uh, 4,800,000. That is what she got. What about A who has got a ratio of five? What is he going to have or, uh, from what, from this? Uh, so it's a matter of what, uh, of your application of proportion there, uh, where we know that this is going to be more, definitely we're gonna have a more three is greater than, uh, five is greater than three. So which means the amount here is going to be more. So it's going to be five over three multiply by 4,800,000. So there guys, it's now you and your mathematical skills to reduce this part until you obtain the exact value. But here we got something like three into three, which is one, three into four, which is one, remainder one, uh, three into 18, that's gonna be a six. So it's going to be six here and we're gonna have a zero, uh, a zero here, a zero here, a zero here and a zero there. Okay, so now we have to multiply, but as you can see, five multiplying these zeros here, they're going to remain as they are. That is one, two, three. And we've got these two here, which is one, two. Okay, so let's multiply five times six here. That is a 30. We're gonna have our three here, then five times one, which is five plus three, which is going to give us eight. So this one is going to have $8 million. So that is the share of uh, partner B, partner A. Okay, that is our partner A. So you got $8 million uh, according to the ratio that they are given. All right, then we are given on question three. In the diagram, PQRS is a parallelogram. Uh, so take note of your laws or the rules that you know about parallelogram, guys. You know that these sides, they are parallel and equal. Uh, these sides, they are also uh, parallel and uh, equal. So that is what we have, opposite sides are parallel and equal. Okay, so the first equation is to calculate uh, angle P -R -Q P -Q -R. Okay, so that is PQR, which is uh, PQR, this angle here. All right, so what are you going to have there? So remember guys, from your parallel lines, these ones which create a C, like these uh, C angles, uh, which are co-interior angles, the one which create a C, we know that these ones, they add up to 180 degrees. They are not equal, but they add up to 180 degrees if we add them. So which means to find this angle, you're just going to simplify uh, 60 from 180 degrees. So 180 minus 60 degrees, which is going to give us something like 120 degrees. So this angle here is going to be uh, 120 degrees, which is uh, your PQR. That's 120 degrees. Okay, let's move on to RSQ. That is RSQ here. Uh, that is RSQ, this angle here. All right, so what are we going to do in order for us to obtain this angle at that uh, part? All right, there's something that we actually know here uh, that, uh, okay, the other thing that we are supposed to know, this is 120 that we present at Q. So the 120 also is the same. I want you to know these properties on a parallelogram. Let me just indicate them so that they can be clear for us. Okay, what you must know is that opposite angles on a parallelogram, definitely they are going to be equal. So this angle 
is going to be also 60 degrees. It's opposite to this angle, which is the same thing. This angle on Q, the whole of this angle at S here is going to be uh, 120 degrees, just like this angle. That is, a, these are the properties of a parallelogram. Opposite angles are equal. Okay, so using this concept, that means someone was going to actually have this angle at what? Uh, at angle S, this angle that is remaining at S here because we need this angle on S, which is this piece here. But we say the whole of this angle is 120. So to find the remaining angle, which is the one that we want here, is going to be 120 degrees minus 85. So we have to remove this 85, the one that we have from this point up to this point. We have to remove this angle from uh, 180, from 120. And this is going to give us something like 35. If I'm not mistaken there. All right, so this angle here is going to be 35 degrees. So that's our angle uh, RS cubed. That is RS cubed, which is 35 degrees. Okay, so this was uh, 35 degrees here. All right, let's see RQT. Okay, so we've got RQT, which is this angle here. Uh, let me remove this part here. Okay, so this is your RQT from R to Q uh, to T. Okay, so this is the angle that we are supposed to calculate here. So what can we do guys? Uh, which concept can we actually use? Okay, I want us to see something here. Uh, from this triangle R S to R to Q here. Uh, R Q, uh, S Q T is a straight line. That is what you're given here. This one is a straight line. S Q T is a straight line. So which means this here is an exterior angle that we have here. It's an exterior angle, okay. And we know that uh, the relationship from our triangles that if you extend a line like this, you are going to have an exterior angle, which is equal to the sum of these two opposite interior angles, which is this angle and this angle here. So let's say this is your A, and uh, this is your B. The exterior angle is going to be A plus B. That is the concept of a triangle. So it means uh, this exterior angle at C is going to be the sum of these interior angles, the opposite. This is the interior angle, but the opposite interior, we're talking of 60, and we are also talking of what? Of 35. So these angles added together, they are going to give us this angle here. So it's going to be 60. Uh, plus 35 degrees, which is something like uh, 95 degrees, if I'm not mistaken there. Okay, so that's what you're going to have in this case. So this angle is going to be 95 degrees, just like that. Okay, so there are so many ways. I want you to try and see which way, uh, but whatever way that you're going to use or that you're going to have, it must give you the same answer as this one that we just obtained of 95. So that was it, guys, just three marks for everything. And on number... Uh, okay, let's just ask just so that we can have some space on top there. Okay, we are given the bearing of P, uh, that the village P from Q is 109. Find the three figure bearing of Q from P. Okay, so the first thing that we know, guys, is to represent our bearing. And I talked about this type of a question where uh, you have to indicate from, always you indicate the bearing from, that is where you start, okay. So this is your North Pole, uh, which is from, from, take note here, from village Q, which means we are starting at Q. So this is your point at Q. All right, and this is three-figure bearing, where I told you three-figure bearing is always taken from the North in a clockwise direction. It's always from the North Pole in a clockwise direction. So definitely uh, 109 is in between uh, 90, and 180 in between this quadrant. That's where we are going to have our 109 somewhere there. We just indicate somewhere there. All right, so this is the angle that we are going to indicate in this case here of 109 degrees. Okay, so this is Q and wherever that you are going to reach, we are going to reach now P, which is our P here. So at P, we have to indicate a North Pole here. Okay, let's just see if our North Pole something of that nature. All right, so this is a North Pole, guys. Just pardon this diagram, uh, the way it looks like. Well, let me just remove this line and redraw and see if it's gonna, if we are going to win. All right, yeah, something of this nature. 
And that's what you're going to have. So this is the North Pole uh, that is at point, at point P. All right, so this is our point P here, uh, the one that has got this North Pole. Um, just You can write anyway, but this is for point P. So you can write it anyway. Let's just say this or P. So that's not the question. The question didn't ask us to represent the diagram. The question is asking us to calculate the three figure take note. The first part is the three figure bearing of Q from P. Now you are starting at P. So that means you are going to represent three figure bearing is the one that is in from the north. Remember, three figure bearing is taken from the north in a clockwise direction like this. All right, so this is the angle that you are supposed to calculate. And um, what are we going to do? So there are so many ways, guys, you can use the concept that these two lines, the north poles, they are going to be parallel lines like that. So if they are parallel, it means this angle here that is at Q, here this 109, the whole of, uh, let me just choose another part here to use. All right. So I'm saying this angle that is at Q, uh, this angle of 109, and uh, this angle here, they're going to be equal, the one that I'm indicating at P here, why we've got Z angles, but that's, that one is just a stretched Z. This one is a stretched Z, okay? So this angle, and this angle still, they are equal if these lines are parallel, okay? So it means this whole angle is going to be 109 degrees. And we know that angles on a straight line gives us 180 degrees. So we've got 180 and 109. So therefore, our final answer in this case is going to be uh, 180 plus 109. Okay, so that is the angle that we are going to have as our three-figure bearing, which is 180 degrees plus 109 degrees. Okay, so if we add uh, these two, we are going to obtain something like 289 degrees. Okay, so that was the three-figure bearing, 289 degrees. Okay, then the last question on B is to calculate the compass bearing, still of Q from P, which means we are still at the same pole of P, going back to to Q, but compass bearing, remember, it must deal with poles. So which pole is being affected by this line that is from P going to Q? As you can see, the poles that are affected is this North Pole and the West here, you are in the West, where this line is appearing here. It is in between the North and in between the West. So which means your answer is going to have North uh, of a certain angle, the one that we do not know here, but going to the west. So now we need the angle that is in between here. So what is the angle now? So we have to cross check. Let's cross check from our diagram. Uh, the angle that we are talking about uh, in between the north and the west, this is the angle that we are going to have here in between from the north going to west, which is this angle here. This is the one that we need. So let us find this angle. So to find this angle, there are so many ways. Remember this 109 and this angle here, they form a C, they are co-interior angles. So they add up to 180 degrees. So to find the angle at P there, we are going to subtract 109 uh, from 180 degrees and it's going to give us 71 degrees. So it means this angle here is 71 or you could have subtracted uh, 289 from 360, it's still one and the same thing. So if this angle is 71, that is the angle between the North Pole and the West. Okay, so that is the angle that you're going to write in here. So it's not uh, 71 degrees to the, to the West. That is uh, how you're supposed to answer these typical questions on, uh, on bearing, okay, compass bearing. Solve the inequality on question 5a. Uh, this one is just a direct inequality, guys. Let us just quickly uh, solve in our equation, uh, our inequality, sorry. So there we are just going to collect like terms. The method of collecting like terms, x minus three is less than or equal to three x uh, plus 10. So we just collect like terms and avoid working with the negative values. Yes, you can do that, but just avoid work with negative values. How can I avoid that? I'm just going to transpose this uh, 10 to that side and it's going to be minus 3 minus 10 is less than or equal to already I have got 3x on this side so if I transpose this x to the other side it's going to be minus x which is same as minus 1x so minus 3 minus 10 that is minus 13 so we're going to have minus 13 greater than or equal to 2x 2 minus 1 that is uh, 3 minus 1 that is 2 
and we can divide by two. I have avoided working with a negative. So X is greater than or equal to minus 6,5, yeah, something like that, minus six and a half. That's what you're going to have, or minus 6,5, it's just one and the same thing. Then uh, given that X is an integer, write down the least possible value of X, which satisfy this inequality. Okay, when we solved this inequality, we obtained that X uh, writing or speaking from this X here, it's X is greater than or equal to, which means we are talking about values of X like this. Uh, this is your minus six and a half here. Uh, this is your minus seven. Uh, this is your minus six going uh, to the positive. I don't know, uh, whatever value up to, up to infinity. Okay. And your values, they are going to be taken here from this minus six here. That is where our values are going to be. But we need values which are greater than this. So which means we are referring the values which are to the right. These are the values. So of all these values, which one is the least value of x, which represents what? An integer. Which one is the least? So as you can see, of all these values that we have, uh, the least value is going to be uh, the first integer. And our first integer is minus six. Suppose we have a minus six, minus five, minus four, and so on up to infinite, as we can see. So the first integer is going to be minus six, which is your least value. So that is the value of X uh, that we are referring here, which is minus six. So here we said uh, minus six is greater than or equal to half, or you can even write it here like x is greater than or equal to minus six and a half. It's still one in the same thing. This inequality, you can write it like this. It's still one in the same thing. Uh, okay, so that's minus six then. And uh, I think it was cheaper like that. Okay, make you to be the subject of the formula. All right, so what can we do, guys? You simply have to introduce this over one, over one. So we can clear fractions by multiplying by the LCM. Here we've got K. So we're going to multiply each and every term by K here. Uh, multiply by k here, uh, multiply by k here. All right, so t times k is going to give us tk, uh, which is equal to k, and k here will cancel. So you're going to have mu squared minus one into k, that is k, and if you multiply, it's going to be five mgk, like that, okay. We want to make you to be the subject of the formula. So definitely you have to transpose, uh, avoid working with the negative. So transpose this negative five uh, to the left-hand side. So that is going to be TK plus five uh, MGK. All right, which is equivalent to M uh, U squared. Okay, so I want to make U to be the subject and M is multiplying. You can divide this by M here. Uh, we can divide this by M here. So cancel out, cancel out. Uh, we are going to be left with the U squared, which is equal to this part, everything, which is TK plus five MGK, everything over M. All right, so how do we remove the square? Remember whenever guys, we are given a square for you to remove the square, you have to introduce what? We have to introduce the square root both sides. So it's going to be the square root here, uh, the square root there. All right. So the moment we introduce the square root, it means we are going to be left with the U in this case. So our U is going to be plus or minus the square root of the answer here. Yes, it's because of the space, guys, but uh, you're supposed to write this uh, properly, but because of the space, but it's going to be TK uh, plus 5MGK here, everything over M. So like I said, guys, it's just because of the space, but I uh, was supposed to write it uh, somewhere. Uh, but that is what you're going to have uh, in this case. Uh, so there are so many ways of uh, simplifying change of subject. Someone can work it another way and obtain another different answer, but still giving us the same thing. Okay, write the number that you're given as a number in base of what? As a number in base of five. So all we need, guys, is to ask ourselves, which number did we have before? Yes, we can convert this to base 10 is fine. But we can simply ask ourselves because writing this manner simply means we were converting to base 10. And uh, this is five to the exponent, which means we are writing in base of what? In base of five, where this five to the exponent of two simply means we are multiplying by one times five to the power of two uh, plus three times five. It simply means this was your five to the power of one because we know that five to the power of one is one does not change. 
And the four here, what does this mean? It means you were multiplying four to five to the exponent of zero. Since five is not there, it means that was five to the exponent of zero. There was uh, the first, remember, how you write your exponents zero, one, two, in that order. So it's the same thing. So these were the numbers which were in base of what? Which were in base of five before we had to write in this format. We had got one, we had got three, and we have got four. So these were the numbers which were in base of what? Which were in base of five. So it's one, three, four in base of five, just like that, okay? So that was uh, the case and uh, to base eight. So this time now for us to convert to base eight, definitely uh, let us just convert to base 10. I think that's gonna be the easier for, for most of us. So we have to go back to the base 10 exactly, five to the power of two here, that's 25 plus, three times five, which is 15 plus four. So if we add 15 uh, plus uh, 25 plus 15, that's 40 plus four, which is uh, 44 in base of 10. So that is what I'm saying. You could have done this, then you convert 44, you convert to base five, okay? So you, you are going to obtain uh, the same answer as this one, okay? But this time we want to convert to base eight. So it's going to be 40, four here, then we divide by eight throughout. Okay, so this is your eight and this is your remainder here. So we're going to have our remainder there, something like of this nature. So eight into 44, it's gonna be into five, into four, which is five times uh, remainder four, then uh, eight into five, that is zero remainder five. So it's going to be zero remainder five and know that your answer is taken from the bottom going upwards so our answer is going to be five, uh, four in base of eight. The one that was dividing is eight. So it's going to be five, four base eight. So that was it guys for this question. In base of eight, uh, I think it was clear again, state the order of rotational symmetry of a parallelogram. Okay, so a general parallelogram has got two, uh, according to the order of rotational symmetry, it has got what? It has got two. So that's what we have got there. So I think it was direct just two. Um, B, we have get, uh, got a triangle, which is called X, Y, Z. Uh, let's just see if our sketch of the triangle, it's X, uh, Y, uh, Z. Okay. So on this triangle, the question is, uh, what is going to be the possible, uh, if given that X, Y is five centimeters, X, Y here, is five centimeters, uh, Y, Z is uh, six centimeters like that, okay. So the question is, given that triangle X, Y, Z is only one line of symmetry, write down the two possible length for X, Z. This is your X, Z, which is the missing length. But take note, they are saying this triangle has got only one line of symmetry. So if it has got only, only one line of symmetry, it means this triangle is an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is the one that has got what? One line of symmetry. If it is a triangle, one line of what? Of symmetry. All right, so it means if it is a triangle and a, an isosceles triangle, which has got, remember your isosceles triangle states that two sides, they are going to be equal then this will be the line of symmetry. So definitely our triangle can be, for it to be a source less, it's either uh, our X, Y here is going to be what? It's going to be six or it's going to be five. That is the case. Uh, okay, we uh, guys, and there is no back here. Uh, okay, of which I have like erased everything. Okay, anyways, uh, that was our triangle X, Y, Z, something of this nature, guys, just pardon what happened there. All right, so what I'm trying to say is that if this is an associate triangle, it means if this is five, then this can also be five like this. So X, Y, X, Z can be five. Uh, it, it becomes an associate triangle if it is five and five like that, okay? So which means we can expect uh, this to be five centimeters. We can expect uh, this side to be uh, five centimeters. Also, that's not the only way we can expect this triangle to be like this, okay? To For it to be uh, an isosceles triangle, we can expect it this time to have these two sides to be equal, the this side at uh, 
at uh, y z this one and this side at um, x z that they must be the same also so that is what we are simply having in this case so what i'm trying to say is that if it is an isosceles triangle if this side is six centimeters it becomes an isosceles and it will be having one line of symmetry like this okay so therefore the possible length that we had in this case was going to be five or six centimeters so that it becomes what an isosceles so the tricky part was that it has got one line of symmetry. They are just saying it's an isosceles triangle. So uh, those sides are the possible ones that we are going to have so that it becomes what? An isosceles triangle. A rectangle on question number nine, it measures 10,2 centimeters by uh, 7,1 centimeters, correct to one decimal place. Take note here, correct to one decimal place. So the question is find the minimum possible perimeter. So the minimum possible perimeter, we know that perimeter is equal to two into length plus width. Okay, so which means the length is long as I, this is your length and uh, this is your width here, which is the breadth. So it can be width or breadth. It's just one and the same thing. Some they use width, some they use breadth. Or breadth. So uh, if it was rounded off to one decimal place, we have to ask ourselves because we need the minimum, which is the least. Okay, so 10,2 before it was rounded off to give us 10,2. What is the possible value that we had? Remember, it was rounded off to one decimal place. So it means before we had uh, a number that had got two decimal places, uh, which was in this case, I told you, you just subtract one less than this, which is going to be one and it will be a five. Because if you round off five, it's going to change this one into two. So the minimum uh, length was going to be 10 comma one five. If it was maximum, let's say they wanted you to calculate the maximum, you're going to use 10 comma two four. This one, if you round it off, it comes back to 10 comma two. So we need the minimum, which is this one, is the one that we need. Uh, so this is our minimum length. We move on to the width, we do the same on seven comma one, we find the minimum one less than this, one minus one, that is zero, so it's going to be seven comma zero five. So this is your least width and this is your least uh, length. So therefore our perimeter now is going to be, uh, we substitute now these values, perimeter is going to be two into the length, which is 10 comma one five plus the width, which is 7,05. All right, so we are going to add uh, these two together, um, then multiply, and it's going to give us 17,2. Okay, this is 17,2 that you're going to obtain here. And if you multiply by two, you're going to obtain 34,4. Yeah, that is 4,14,1, which is 34,4 uh, centimeters. Okay, so this is perimeter which is measured in centimeters. So that was the case. So for the minimum value, you use the minimum values. If it was maximum, you're going to use the maximum value here, which means for 7.1, uh, the maximum value was going to be 7,14. So these were the values that we are going to use if it was requiring you to calculate uh, the maximum possible. But in this case, it's minimum. So you use uh, minimum values there. All right, so that was it guys. Uh, and uh, we are given that on question 10, a car uses L liters of petrol for every D kilometers traveled, state the type of variation. So this is a direct one. As you can see, as the distance increases, the number of liters increases. So that is direct. Remember direct variation, I told you, when one element increase, another must increase also, or if one element decrease, another must decrease also. So this is a direct variation here. So this one was a direct just direct, okay? Uh, given that a car uses five liters to cover 60 kilometers, find the equation connecting L and D. So we need the equation that's gonna connect. So take note, we are given that L here varies with D. That is what it means from our direct variation. L and D, they are directly proportional to each other. So I can introduce the constant where L is equal to KD. So if L is equal to KD, and I'm given the number of L, which is the liters, is five liters, which is equal to D, which is the distance of 60 uh, kilometers, okay, times K, which is the one that I'm supposed to calculate so that I can have the relationship between these two. 
So our constant is going to be here, five into five, that's one, five into 60, that's 12. Okay, so that's one over 12. So therefore, the relationship now between L and D, we need the equation that's connect only L and D. So it's going to be L is equal to uh, K, which is one over 12 times D. So that's gonna be our relationship or the equation which connects the, the number of liters with the distance which was traveled. Okay, so that was the case uh, like that. Okay, evaluate on number 11, three M to the exponent of minus three times two M to the exponent of minus five. So it's just a matter of uh, applying your laws of exponents. Three uh, times two does not need any law. So it's going to be six. Here you are multiplying the bases which are the same. So you add the exponents which is minus five plus five, simply minus five here plus five there. Uh, which is going to give us 6m to the exponent of a zero here. If you add five, minus five plus five, that's a zero here. And if we are to cross check, it is our m here that is being raised to the exponent of zero is the m. And we know that a number to the exponent of zero is one. So everything here is going to give us, uh, that will be six times one. So it's six times one, which is going to give us a six, just like that, okay? So these are the typical questions and what you're supposed to do is just a matter, as you can see, it's just a matter of playing around with the question and see how they can ask these uh, typical questions, something of that nature. All right, on number B, we are now given four over nine to the exponent of minus half. So how can we simplify this four over nine to the exponent of a negative half? So remember that we can simply remove uh, the negative exponent by introducing one over and negative simply means the inverse of so to remove this negative here you simply have to interchange you want to remove this negative here all right so what you do is that you simply interchange these numbers here nine and what and four so it's going to be nine over four to the exponent of a half. The negative has already disappeared. Okay. That's like that. Or you can introduce one over four over nine like this to remove the negative and it's going to give you the same thing, nine over four. Okay, but nine over four to the exponent of a half, we know that when you are given a fractional exponent of to the exponent of half simply means the square root of, so it's the square root of nine over four. Uh, which is going to be plus or minus square root of nine, which is three, square root of four, which is two. So that's what you're going to have in this case, which is plus or minus one and a half, two into three, that's one and a half there. So it's going to be plus or minus one and a half or plus or minus three over two is still one and the same thing actually there. And the number 12, we are given that in the diagram A, B, C, D, that is A, B, C, D, it's a quadrilateral as you can see, and this one's a quadrilateral, but they are intersecting uh circles uh, b c d and all these are straight lines so b uh, d here to c to q and a b to p these are actually straight lines so the question is to calculate a b c so what is the angle a b c that is the first question if you're given that this is 95 degrees therefore what is angle a b c so let us locate our angle here a to b to c which means you're talking or oh, we are referring to this angle here so what are you going to have in this case? Take note, guys, this is exactly quadrilateral. All the vertices are on the circumference of a circle. So we are going to simply subtract this from 180 degrees because we know that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. That is, they add up to 180 degrees. So this angle is going to be 85 degrees, just like that. Okay, so that's your 85 degrees here. All right, let's move on to PQC, PQC, uh, P to Q to C, which is this angle here. Uh, from this side, uh, you're going to take note from this uh, C, Q, B, uh, P, B, this circle that we've got here, 85 and this angle, uh, they are equal. Why? Uh, this is the exterior angle, which is equal to the opposite interior angle. Exterior angle of a cyclic part is equal to the opposite interior. So that means that angle is going to be 85 degrees. So this is 85 degrees there. Okay. Given also that uh, DAB is X. Okay. So this is our DAB here, which is uh, X. Uh, calculate or find an expression for BPQ in terms of X. So we need BPQ in terms of x, which is our B, P, Q here, B, P, 
PQ, this angle here in terms of X. But as we noted from this, guys, we saw that this angle and this angle are the same. So it means this angle at P is the same as this angle at C. Uh, the exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior. But these two here, they are opposite angles of a cyclic quad. Uh, so which means we are going to subtract this of, uh, X from 180 which is 180 degrees uh, minus X. Okay, so this is 180 minus X, which you said is the same as this one. So it is going to be 180 degrees minus X. Okay, so that was it guys for this angle. So it is going to be 180 degrees minus X. That is in terms of X, uh, that is what they needed. As you can see guys, it's just one, one, one mark here. Just one, one, one. So it means something that you can actually play around and see. Uh, use the Venn diagram to find our complement intersection S. That is the first question that you're given, our complement intersection S. So what does our complement mean? Our complement, we are talking about those elements which are not in R. So our complement, these are the elements which are not in R. So let me just indicate it this way. Uh, these are elements which are not in R. So which means we are referring to these elements here. This is your R complement, okay. So that's your uh, complement. All these which are not in R. So what you do is that you close the set R, okay? You close that set, you close that set, you close that set like this. Okay, so this is our R complement, which is not in what, which is not in R. That is our R complement. Intersection uh, S, okay, this is our set S here. Okay, so this is our set S. As you can see, guys, this is our set S. This one, it's our set S. You cover the set S as it is like this, as it is like this, as it is like this, as it is like this. Okay, so the intersection is going to be the part where we are seeing the blue and the red marker there. So uh, cross-checking here, where do we have our blue and red marker? We are going to see it here. Uh, where this blue and meet here, where we've got blue and red on this region here, and also on this region. Don't mind this part here, it's just a little flip over that happened here. Uh, all right, so let me just have it. It was just a flip over, it's supposed to be like this. Uh, okay, I'm putting a shape instead of, right, so what is happening now? Okay, let me just remove this shape here. I'm putting a shape instead of what, instead of a line. Okay, so this is what I'm saying you from your C because this one you're talking about outside of C, so it was supposed to be something of this, yeah. So as you can see, uh, these are the region that we are going to have this part that has got uh, black here and also this part that's got black. So which elements do we see there? As you can see, the only element that we have inside here is only this six here that is going to, to remain. So, which means on this part, we are just going to have six. That is the set that is going to, to remain in this case. All right, so that's how they, they can ask these questions, guys. So all you need is to be very, very specific with the question that you are given, uh, something of that nature. And you see that uh, you see that it's not going to be a uh, much problem if you are to revise along also the sets that you're given. But that's what we had, so which means or you can list the cell, the elements. I think I talked about that uh, other method of listing the elements of R complement, then you intersect with C. So in this case, uh, we're just left with the uh, six. All right. So that's what we had. We move on to the other part, which is uh, R intersection S, union R intersection T. Okay, so R intersection S, this is it, R intersection S between R and S. This is our R intersection S, this one. All right, so this is our R intersection S. Then union, which means you combine with R intersection T. Okay, so our R intersection T, which is this one, R intersection T, the intersection of R and T, which is this one. So that's what you're going to, to have. So this is the region that you're going to have. And union means combine everything. So you combine everything. So which means we have got eight, four and seven. These are the elements that you're going to combine together, which is four, seven, and uh, eight. So it's going to be four, seven, and eight. So that's what we had there. Yeah, so let's move on to another one. 
number of elements in R, union S, union T, but there's a complement here. So uh, we know that R, a union S, union T, we are talking about the combination when these elements are combined together here from R here, all these part here taken together. Okay, so this is the union of everything. So complement, which means it's not part of this. So which means which elements are you talking about? We are referring to this 11 and 12. So that is what we had in this case. So that is what it simply means. We are left with what? 11 here and 12. These are the only elements that will be left with outside of the union, but it's in the universal set. So it's 11 and uh, 12 in this case. So that's what we had. Uh, this. But the question now is list the number. If we're not answering, then this question is number of elements. How many elements are there? So if we are to count back uh, these elements, okay, guys, uh, let's count back our elements. We are going to see that there are two. So it's one, two. So therefore, the number of elements in this set is two. You count them. How many are there? That was the question there, okay? Uh, express this uh, logarithmic equation in an uh, as an equation in index form. Okay, so we know that from log form, this is what you're supposed to know. Logarithm of A in base B is equal to C. I told you guys that in uh, initial or in index form is going to be A, B, C, which is A is equal to B to the exponent of C. So it's going to be B to the exponent of C, just like that, okay. So if this be the case, therefore, let us write first as a single log because you can only convert to index form provided that you are coming from a single logarithm. That is what you're supposed to have. You must have a single uh, logarithm in this case. Okay, so let us express this as a single log. Uh, okay, so what are you going to do? Uh, two here is multiplying, so you're going to raise this to be the, an exponent of y there. So it's going to be logarithm of x in base 10 plus uh, the logarithm of y squared in base of 10, which is equal to one, okay? That was our first law. We are taking this from what? From p log m, which is equal to log m to the exponent of p. So we have to raise this to be an exponent of the log. And here we are adding, the bases are the same, remember, when you're adding logarithms and the base are the same, you multiply the numbers. So you're going to multiply x, uh, y squared like this in the base of 10, and this is going to give us a one. So as you can see, now we have got a single uh, logarithm, which is uh, this same way as this part that we had here. So we are going to take our a, our a in this case is this part, which is uh, x, uh, y squared is equal to our b, which is the base, which is 10, uh, to the power of C. So it's 10 to the power of what? 10 to the power of one. So that like this, it will be uh, an index form. So an index form is simply exponents indices. Okay, so that, was, that was the case, just like that case, just like that, just like that. Okay, number 15, it is given that vector P is equal to vector Q and vector R express uh, P minus three Q as a column vector. So this one is just a matter of uh, substituting here P minus three Q. Uh, that is our item A, so which means, uh, all right, I'm just repeating this. Let me just remove. Uh, so let's get back here and substitute our vector P, which is six minus eight. So we've got six minus eight minus three Q, Q, which is uh, three, five. So that's three, five there. So the three is just a scalar. Okay, so avoid uh, using the negative, just leave it for the meantime, this negative here, multiply the numbers, which is three, avoid uh, the negative, just leave it like that. So it means it's going to be six uh, minus eight like this, which is minus, we multiply three and three, uh, which is nine, three and five, which is uh, 15 like this. So you multiply the two and you can subtract now corresponding elements that's six minus nine, which is uh, minus three, uh, minus eight minus 15 from your calculations guys, minus eight minus 15, you add these two, eight plus 15, uh, then you, you take the sign of the, of the, which is the, com in fact, you don't take sign of the bigger number, you take the common sign. So this one is going to be 23 
with the common sign, our common sign was a negative here. So it's going to be negative 23. So that was it, guys, as you can see, it's direct. Okay, uh, given that P plus Q is equal to 3R, calculate or find the value of M and the value of N. Okay, so we are given there on item B, another condition to work with where we are given that P, which is A6 minus eight, when it is added to Q, which is our Q here, which is three, five, when they are added together, they must give us this value, which is three R. So it's going to be three times R, which is in this case is M uh, N. So just like that, okay? So what are the values of M and N? So you can just uh, add these two because these are like terms. So you can add six plus uh, three, which is going to be nine. Uh, minus eight plus five, which is a uh, minus three. So it's going to be minus three here, which is equivalent to scalar. The scalar multiplies everything. So it's three times M, three M, three times N, which is three N, just like that. All right, so corresponding elements are equal. As we know guys that corresponding elements, they will be equal. So we are going to equate nine and three M. So nine is equal to three M divide by three, divide by three here. So our M is going to be three into nine, which is three. So our M in this case, that's a three. And uh, we move over to N, we do the same. We, we equate the corresponding values. So negative three is equal to three N, divide by three also, by three also. So our N in this case is going to be uh, a negative one. So that's what we had here, which is our N being a negative, one. Okay, so that was it, guys, just like that. Convert the fraction to a percentage. Three over eight is a percentage on item one. That is three over eight. Is a, so, guys, whether the fraction is a decimal, whenever you express to a percentage, simply multiply by what? By 100%. So, if you multiply by 100%, it's a matter of you reducing the numbers until you get the exact value. In this case, uh, we can actually reduce by four. Four here, that's two. Uh, four into, into 100, we know this is uh, 25. So, you can multiply three times 25, which is something like uh, 75 over two, two into seven, that is three, uh, remainder one, two into 15 here, that's a seven into 14, and there's a remainder of one, which is comma, two into 10, which is five, so it's gonna be 37, comma uh, five percent, just like that. Okay, then 9% as a decimal fraction. So remember, for us to express as a percentage, you multiply it by 100%. So to remove the percentage, you divide by 100%. So it's just going to be nine over 100, that's it. But now they're saying as a decimal fraction. Okay, so you have to express this as a decimal. That's uh, 100 into nine, which is zero comma into 90, that's zero into 900, that is nine. So you express now as a decimal. So answer the question uh, that you're given. Don't write uh, the way that you think, but answer the question, all right. On number B, we are given now to simplify the expression, the square root of three plus the square root of 12. Okay, I told you guys, whenever you're dealing with sets, you can't uh, simplify when the numbers under the square root are not the same. So you have to make sure that these numbers under the square root are the same, of which square root of three is already in exact form. There's nothing that we can do. So all we need is to simplify square root of 12, of which you know that the smallest, uh, the highest or the biggest the perfect square that we have here is four. 4 times 3 gives us 12, and square root of 4 is 2. So it's going to give us 2 square root of 3. All right, so if you are still having challenges with sets, please make sure that you watch the videos on sets uh, on Mason African Motive so that at least you can revise as much as you can. Uh, and here we just add 1 plus 2 because now these numbers under the square root are the same. So 1 plus 2, that is 3 square root of of three. Remember, I told you guys, you don't add the numbers under the square root, okay? You just add these numbers outside, outside of the square root. These numbers are the ones that you add, all right? It's just like that. So make sure the numbers under the square root are the same uh, before doing anything, all right? Number 17, we are given a velocity time graph. We've got our velocity in meters per second. Uh, the time in seconds. So whenever you're given this type of a question, what you're supposed to do is to make sure that uh, the velocity is the same. Velocity in meters per second, the time must be in seconds. If your velocity is in kilometers per hour, 
then make sure your time is not in, in hours, just like that. Okay, so in this case, our diagram is fine. Then the question is to describe the motion of the object as illustrated on the section of the graph from O to A, that is the item one. So we are describing the motion. What is happening from O to A? What is it that is happening? So you know that one, this one is what? It's an acceleration. So there the object is accelerating. So that is uh, an acceleration. So you just describe in short, okay, it is an acceleration uh, from zero to uh, from zero to 40 meters per second. So that one is an acceleration uh, from zero to 40 meters per second. And item two, from A to B. So from A to B, the motion or the object here that we have, it's moving with a constant velocity. So this is constant uh, velocity here. So we've got a constant uh, velocity. So you're saying the object is moving with constant velocity from A to B that is uh, of 40 meters per second. This is the constant velocity that the object is moving with throughout whenever there's a straight line, uh, a horizontal line like that is there. Uh, whenever you've got a horizontal line, it means the velocity was constant. And also the other thing that you must note, at a condition where you have got constant velocity, acceleration there is equal to zero meters per square. So I'm just saying, I didn't say this is what you're supposed to write. You just need to know this. Acceleration is equal to zero uh, when there is a constant velocity, just like that. Okay, calculate the distance covered by the object during the 20 seconds. Okay, so we are talking about the whole of the dist or the whole time that was taken in 20 seconds. Yes, you can see it's a trapezium. And we know that distance is equal to area. So you can just use area of a trapezium, half sum of parallel sides uh, times the perpendicular height, or you can use here, the area of a triangle plus area of a rectangle plus area of a, a triangle, which means you're going to use three shapes uh, depending with the, the way that you want. But, but in this case, I just use the whole trapezium, the whole of this trapezium, uh, as we can see. So which means the sides which are parallel. In this case, we are referring to what? We are referring to these two sides, which will never meet, which is this side A, B and uh, O, C. Okay, so these are your parallel sides. So from A to B, uh, this corresponds with eight. This is eight here, this corresponds with 16. So 16 minus uh, eight, which is eight, okay? So that length is eight, so it's going to be half of eight. So this is going to be half of eight plus another parallel side. We are talking about from zero, from this O, to C, so from O to C, that is the parallel side, the whole of this side, and is 20 according to this, which is 20 there. So it's going to be half of eight uh, plus 20, multiply by the height, and the height in this case, this is your perpendicular height, you can take anyway, uh, but that is your height, this one. So this is your perpendicular height, or this one, that is your height, and it corresponds to 40 here. So this line, is 40 according to this value that you have got here. So it's going to be times 40 here. Just like that. So if you can add this uh, 20 plus uh, eight, which is going to give us something like 28 here. So that's gonna be 28. Two into two, that is one. Two into 28, uh, which is 14. So you have to multiply 14 times uh, 40 in this case, which is zero here, four times four. Uh, that is 16, k one, four times one, which is four plus one, which is five. Okay, so that's gonna be 560 meters. So that is distance, which is measured in meters. So there you're just writing 560 uh, meters, just like that, and it's two marks for that. Okay, distance, guys, area. Number 18, we are given the following entries show how, uh, show the number of uh, bicycles sold per day. So these are the bicycles just sold per day in nine days okay so these are the arrangements and they are not given in order of size so uh it is best that we have to write in order of size okay the first question is to find the mod so the mod does not need us to write in order of size we just need the number that is appearing the most okay and i cross-checked here the numbers that are appearing the most is 10 here we've got 10 which is one uh two three times this is the highest number because 12 is appearing two times so 10 is the mod here uh, that is the number with highest frequency. And for us to find the median, okay, the median, we have to arrange our number in order of size. So I'm going to start with the smaller number, which is six, uh, followed by nine. Okay, that's the smaller number. 
followed by 10. So we said we've got t, uh, three tens that we have. So it's 10 here, another 10, and another 10. So there are three. Uh, then we move on. We've got 12 here and uh, 12 there. So we've got 12 and 12. What else do we have? We've got uh, 15, 14, followed by 15. Uh, so this is 14 followed by 15 like that. Okay, so this is 14 here. So uh, the median, we are just going to take the number that is in between uh, these. So I'm just going to cancel this in between six and 15, uh, nine and 14, 10 and 12, uh, 10 and 12. So as you can see, the middle number is going to be 10. So that is your uh, median in this case. Okay, so the median is the middle term when numbers are arranged in order of size, which is 10. Okay, then on C, I want us to understand exactly this question you're given that the next entry, that is the next entry that we have is a new mean. Uh, so calculate, okay, we need to find, sorry, find the next entry if the new mean of the, on the 10th day is 12, okay. So guys, take note, we are given mean, we are given nine days here. Okay, now they are saying calculate the next entry. Okay, uh, that you are going to have, and they gave us mean. So we are given the mean here, which is equal to 12. Okay, what you're supposed to ask yourself is, well, how do you calculate mean? That is what you're supposed to uh, ask yourself. We know that mean is equal to sum of terms over number of terms. So it's sum of terms over number of terms in this case. So this is just a summation to indicate sum of terms. This sign here is just a summation. So this summation simply means sum of, it simply means sum of. So I'm saying sum of terms over number of terms. Okay, so these are sum of terms over number of terms. So the mean is there, okay? Our mean is what? Is 12 here. So we're going to formulate an equation. So let's formulate our equation and see how it's gonna be like. So the mean we said is 13. So 13 is equal to sum of terms. So what you're going to do, you add these nine terms that we are given before, okay? Before, because we are having the 10th entry this time. So what you're going to do, I want you to add these entries that you are given here originally that we were given before these entries these are entries for what for nine days so if you add these entries they are going to give you 98 which corresponds to nine days which is nine numbers that you're talking about okay so there is a 10th entry which is not there here because there's an, a next entry to make it the 10th Okay, so we are going to have 98 uh, from what? From those uh, days that we had, from the nine days that we had, we are going to have, uh, okay, it's this one. So we are going to have 98, here we obtained 98. So it's going to be 98 for the nine days that we have plus the next entry, because we need some, so we have to add the next entry of which we are saying, we do not know the next end so that they will become 10. So just say our next number that we added was X, okay? So we added another number, which is X. And the numbers now, because we are saying sum of terms over number of terms, how many terms are now there? We are now having 10 numbers. There were nine. Then when we added this number, we are now having 10 terms. So we have formulated an equation where we can solve for x by just cross multiplying and performing your calculations, you'll be able to calculate this x uh, cross multiply. That's 10 times 13, which is 130. One times 98, which is 98 plus one times x, which is x. So to find x, we can simply transpose 98 to the other side of the equation and it becomes a minus. So it's going to be 130 minus 98, which is equal to X. So therefore our X in this case is going to be 130. Uh, is it gonna be our new mean guys? It's 130 is, is 12. Oh, am I getting this 13? I'm even surprised why am I getting this thing? I hope someone actually saw this, that uh, there's something that is happening here. I hope we saw that. Okay, so we are saying this is, this is 12 here. 
So it's going to be 120. So this is actually 120 here. All right, so that's 120. Uh, thanks for those who managed to watch and see that this is 120. Okay, if you didn't see that, it's fine. Uh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. At least I saw it earlier. Uh, anyways, uh, we, so we are going to have uh, X, which is 120 minus 98 uh, for my calculations is going to give me 22. Okay, so that is the next entry. So the next entry is going to be 22. So here we just read the answer. You don't, this X, whatever, we, were, we are just introducing so that it can help us to calculate. But when you are writing the final answer, don't indicate that X is 22. Just write your answer, which is 22. Okay, we said 22. Okay, that's it. Uh, factorize. Okay, expand. So this one is to expand. Guys, as you know, expansion of brackets, we have to multiply 3X and uh, 2X. That's 3 times 2, which is 6X squared. Uh, 3x and uh, minus y here, which is minus 3xy, we are done. We move on to 2y and x, so it's going to be 2 times 2, uh, which is 4xy, we are done. Uh, 2y and minus y here, which is going to be minus 2y squared. Okay, so we are going to have 6x squared, collect like terms, minus 3 uh plus four gives us one so it was supposed to be one x y like this but we can't write one x y guys we just write this what is x y like that okay so this is to expand don't factorize just expand okay so this is a two here two i squared all right i think that's it we are just done okay factorize here on number b now factorize 20 x squared uh, what are you going to have in this case? We can factor out five is common uh, between uh, 20 and five here. You can factor out five first. So 20 divided by five, that is a four X squared minus five divided by five. You're going to be left with one Y squared of which uh, inside the bracket, this is a difference of two squares. So we can actually have our two brackets square root of four, that is two square root of X squared, which is X square root of Y squared, which is Y one bracket is going to add another bracket is going to subtract just like that. Okay, so that's what we had uh, from this part. And um, it's just like that, guys. It's just the uh, basic part of uh, approaching these questions. It will be done. Number 20, they are given that um, in the diagram, we are given these angles, D, A, B, and uh, A, B, C. These two angles here are the same. And uh, A, B is equal to B, C. These are the same A, D, and B, C. Uh, then the intersected P name in uh, the triangle that is congruent to triangle ABC. Okay, guys, congruent means they are the same. That is what congruent means. They are the same. Okay, so triangle ABC is congruent. This is the sign for congruent too. So it's going to be a, B. So this time you check with the size. This side A to B, this side is the same as B to A. Okay. So it's going to be B A in this case. And uh, we move on to B C from uh, B to C, this side uh, B C. Okay. So this side. Sorry, guys, I'm referring to the wrong, 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 wrong one. This is A, B, C. Okay, so you are going to have B, C, sorry, B, C, which is this one. Okay, so this is your B, C here, which is same as what? So this is the same as uh, A, D. So it is going to be B, A, then from A to D. They must be the same. So as you can cross-check, this side A, B is the same as side B, A. The angle at B here is the angle at A. The side, this one and the side, they are the same. So that is how you take concurrent. They must be taken uh, up probably with the, with, the, with the case that you you know you're going to use and this one they are even asking here on item two to state the case of congruence that we used so the case that we used here as you can see uh, a b is a side okay then we have got an angle which is the same as this angle so it's a side angle and we say this side and this side are the same. So it's side, angle, side. Okay, so this one, that is the case of congruence, side, angle, side, just like that. Okay, to the sides of triangle X, uh, uh, so this is another part that we have got, uh, triangle X. Do we have triangle X? No, we do not have. So this is my triangle X, and uh, this is my triangle Y in this case uh, that we have. 
Okay, this is my triangle Y like this, okay. So there we are given that there's a triangle X, which is given uh, by the size nine, seven, and uh, six. So this is nine, seven, six. The shortest, so take note, the shortest side of triangle Y, which is similar to triangle X, which means these two triangles, they are similar to each other, all right? So they are saying the smaller one, which is the shortest side is what? Is three centimeters, which is this one. If this is three, if this is six, yeah, this is your shorter side on, tri your, your, your shorter side on triangle X. On triangle Y, it must also correspond with the shorter side. Let's say this is our six and this is our shorter side, they are saying is three. So these two, they correspond to each other and they are similar figures, all right? So this is what we just know for now, okay? The question is, write down the ratio of area now of triangle X as to area to triangle Y. Okay. Remember that from similar figures, when we are given complete, because this side and this side, they correspond. So the six here on triangle X as to the three on triangle Y. This is triangle X as to triangle Y like that. This is just your scale factor. Why? Because it is taken from corresponding sides. And I told you guys from sides, you obtain scale factor. But there we need ratio of area. Whenever you hear or you, you have this area, know that you are working with area factor. This is what it means. You're going to work with area factor there. So if I'm working with area factor, what do I do? I have to square the scale factor so that I obtain the area factor. But before I do that, can I just reduce uh, these values so that I can uh, at least work properly? So by three, that is uh, two. It's going to be two, sorry, S2 by three here, which is one. So this is still your scale factor, but it's in a reduced manner. Now to find the area factor, we are going to square this. All right, so that's two squared which is four as two, one squared, which is one. So this is now the ratio of areas of triangle X as to triangle Y, which is four as to one. So what I'm saying is that you need scale factor and the scale factor is obtained from what? From corresponding sides. Corresponding sides are the one that give you scale factor then you can obtain area factor by squaring that ratio of size, which is your scale factor. You have your, got your area factor, just like that, guys. Okay, on question number 21, we are given that the diagram, uh, there are lines PQ in this case, this line PQ and uh, MN. Okay, this is MN. They intersect at T. So T here is a point of intersection where two graphs meet. Find the equation of line PQ. Okay, so the first question is to find the equation of line PQ. Okay. Uh, guys, I told you that whenever you're given a straight line to find the equation of a line, you can uh, simply use this concept that uh, y is equal to mx plus c, where m is the gradient. So we need the gradient of line pq. So where are we going to have this gradient? We can uh, use the, form, the shape increase in y over increase in x. As you can see here, uh, we've got increase in y here over increase in x. So if I'm to increase in y, it's a positive 3 increase in x is a positive three. So my gradient is what is one. So that's a gradient. Or oh, you can take points. Uh, okay, maybe I lost some others here. Let me just use points. Or oh, you can use points which are on line what? Which are on line P, Q. As long the points are on line P to Q. Okay, so we are going to take any point. So let's take advantage of this point here. It means x at this point corresponds with minus three. Y at this point correspond with minus three. So the point here, we are given minus three, minus three. That is the point that you're given. And another point on this line that we have, the only point that we are given on this line that we can see another one is this one, which passes through the origin. Why? Because at the origin, I told you guys, the coordinates at the origin is zero, zero. Whenever you are working with the origin is zero, zero. So which means I can obtain a gradient from these two by using the formula for gradient, uh, which we say the gradient is equal to the change in Y over the change in X, which is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Yes, someone can use the formula for gradient, which is Y1 minus Y2 
over x1 minus x2 is still one and the same thing. You're going to obtain the same answer here. All right, so uh, using this formula, we are going to have our gradient, which is in this case is going to be uh, y2. So let us just name our points in this case. I'm just going to name uh, this to be my x1, uh, y1 here x2 and y2 so y2 in this case that's a zero here so it's going to be zero minus um y1 which is uh y1 here it's minus three so it's minus minus three over x2 our x2 here that's a zero minus minus uh x1 which is our x1 is minus three so as you can see guys minus and a minus that's a plus so we're going to have zero plus three which is three over zero plus three which is three and it's going to give us a one so looking at this concept, you see that the gradient is the same as the one that we just determined by this way that I was trying to illustrate here by movement. So it's just one and the same thing. Now you have got the gradient, what is then the equation? So we are still on PQ, take note, we are still on PQ, we're just calculating the gradient. So we know that Y is equal to M, where M is the gradient and we said our M in this case, which is the gradient is one. So it's going to be one X and we know that one X is same as X. So it's going to be X plus C. So Y is equal to X plus C. The C is the Y intercept. As you can see, our line is crossing the Y axis at this point where Y is equal to zero. So it was supposed to be a X plus zero like that. So it's just going to be Y is equal to X. X plus zero is just X. Okay, so it means the equation of line PQ is Y is equal to X. That was it guys. That's your PQ, Y is equal to X. Or even by just looking at the line, you can tell uh, the way that it is presented there, but just for the sake of revision, and we are not all in the same uh, mood or same way of understanding this that I'm explaining this, but uh, actually some of these you can even, by looking at the question, you can tell uh, what is happening there. Okay, so that's what we had for this part. I'm just going to remove this and uh, let's see, but why is it that like it doesn't remove or to erase this at once? Anyways, uh, the other question that we are given is now the equation of MN. All right, so we have got the same thing, just like what we did. Uh, let's remove this. We want to put MN this time. We want to put MN. All right, so I'm just going to remove this part here. All right, so uh, let's see our MN, uh, that is our M here to N. So using that concept of gradient, we can also do the same, our gradient, we said increase in Y over increase in X. So here is a decrease, you are going down, so it's minus four, and this one is a positive two. So which means our gradient, which is M is minus four, over two, which is going to give us negative two. So we've got the gradient, or you can use points just like previously. You take this point here, uh, which is zero two. Uh, this point, uh, that's zero two there. And uh, you also take this point at four, which is, uh, oh, sorry guys, this is two zero, not zero two, because X is the one that we have got there. I hope someone saw that. Okay, so this is not, so it's supposed to be two zero here. All right, X is the one that is two and Y is zero there. And another point we are referring to line MN and the other point is this one in the Y intercept, which is zero four. So using this, you are going to obtain uh, the same gradient increase in Y over increase in X is going to be a minus two. So the gradient is there, which is minus two. Therefore the equation, remember our equation is in the form of Y is equal to MX plus C. Okay, so Y is equal to M, which is the gradient. And our gradient in this case, we said it's minus two. So it's going to be minus two X plus C, which is the Y intercept. The graph here crosses the Y axis at what? At four. So that is your Y intercept, which is four. So Y is equal to, minus two X plus four, that would be our equation of this line MN, which is Y is equal to minus two X plus four, just like that. Okay, so that's what we have. So we have got the equation of MN, then uh, B, calculate the coordinates of the point T. Okay, wow, how can they have the guys, guys to hope to ask us this question? Uh, they know that you must understand, or you must know that whenever you are, 
dealing with straight lines whenever you're working with straight lines or even any other graph that you're going to have in the future, okay? The point of intersection here, because T is the one that we need here, this is our T, which indicates the point of intersection of the two graphs. So what you need to know is that at the point of intersection, the two graphs are equal. So at the point, at the point of intersection, at the point of uh, intersection, in this case, uh, at the point of intersection, uh, the given graphs are equal. The given graphs are equal. So if they are equal, we are going to solve the given equation simultaneously. So solve simultaneously. All right. So that is the case whenever you are dealing with what? With the point of intersection, you solve the given equation simultaneously. And which equations are you talking about? Remember, PQ is equal to Y is equal to X. So we are going to take this equation y is equal to x, okay? We move on to this line here, which is uh, mn. We obtain the equation of mn, which is y is equal to minus 2x plus 4. So these are the two equations that you are going to solve. Whenever you find or you deal with the point of intersection, when two graphs meet like this, you just solve those equations, what? Simultaneously. But here we are not going to waste much time to solve these equations simultaneously. Why? Uh, the two equations, they are the same as we can see here. We are already given y is equal to x, y is already the subject when y is x. And here, y is equal to minus 2x plus 4. So it means if this is y and this is y, I'm just going to equate this x here to this part here because they are the same. So I'm going to equate these uh, like that. Okay, so by doing this, I can solve for x. Just like that, guys. Oh, someone can write the traditional way of uh, rearranging y uh, x to this side. It will be minus x, which is equal to zero here. And here we've got y transpose minus 2x to this side is going to be plus 2x is equal to 4. Still, you are going to obtain the same answer if you solve these equations simultaneously. Okay. Or you can just equate these two, taking advantage because they are already the same. Uh, now I can just transpose the minus 2x to the other side is going to be a plus. So it's x plus 2x, uh, which is equal to 4. And x plus 2x, this is 1x, so 1 plus 2, which is 3x, is equal to 4 over 3. Uh, 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 what am I doing? I'm now reducing. Uh, uh, I'm coming fast now. Okay. So the first thing is 3x is equal to 4. Then we can divide by 3. We can divide by three here. All right, so our x is going to be equal to four over three. So after finding the value of x, you can substitute into any of these equations. But guys, instead of, for you to substitute here, guys, it's going to be a long way because here we are just given that these two are the same. Y is equal to x, which means when x is one, y is one. When x is two, y is two. So if our x is four over three, it means our uh, y also is going to be four over three because y and x, they are the same from this equation. Okay, so that means your x here is four over three and your y is four over three. So as a point, you write the value of x here, which is uh, four over three as to the value of y, which is four over three. So that is a point of intersection. You solve for x and y simultaneously. Okay, that was it, guys. And it becomes like, uh, it's another type of equation, but it's nothing actually that is being uh, displayed here. All you need, guys, is to make sure you understand. So uh, if it was paper two, you are given this on a graph. You don't solve simultaneously if it is paper two. Why? Uh, on your graph, you can simply take uh, this part on your graph. So there's no need for you to solve simultaneously. What you simply do is this. Uh, you indicate on your diagram like this. Okay, from point T, you indicate down to the X axis. Okay, so the value of X here is the one that you're going to take. And also here, you take the value of Y, which corresponds at this point. Uh, that is what you're going to do if it is paper two. But now you're in paper one and you don't know this value exactly and you don't know this value. So the other way to do this is to solve simultaneously. But if it is paper two, you can take from your graph direct. Okay, so that is the case that I just wanted to you to know uh, 
at least yeah it can help you guys and let's see the other part that we are given in this case uh we have got uh this part which is now saying uh the following is an extract from mrs green Greenie's telephone bill uh, for the period of 01, uh, 03, uh, 2006 to 31, 03, 2006. The rental is 2000. Uh, 176, 177 units were being used at X cents pay. Take note, it's X cents, and this amount is in dollars. Okay, so you must have X cents, okay. So the question is, uh, okay, then you are given the subtotal, the VAT, the value added tax and the amount you calculate the value of X. So X, what does it mean? X is the amount, X is cents per unit. And we used 177 units. We are saying 177 units. All right, this is what we have gave us an amount of this value here of the units it corresponds direct here it corresponds with this value here which is seven thousand nine hundred and sixty five dollars but this is x cents per unit so you have to express this in cents so how do you express dollars to cents you multiply by 100 because a dollar is got 100 cents so you multiply by 100 and this is going to be seven nine six five zero zero cents okay so how much did we charge per each unit how many how much did we charge per each unit so how are you going to find this definitely we have to divide by the number of units which is 177 so that we know what was the cost per unit okay so each unit uh, was going to cost guys you have to divide here you have to divide guys if you divide properly these numbers here you're going to obtain 4500 so try to reduce by the smaller number the smaller number the smaller number until you get your answer so it's going to be 4500 cents all right so what it means is that each unit costs 4,500 cents, which is here X cents per unit. So X indicating the number of cents, which is uh, 4,500, that is your X, okay? So it's gonna be 4,500 cents. All right, sorry, sorry. So let me just uh, put it this way. Uh, all right, so this is cents here. All right, so that is your X. Then the value of Y here, Y is representing the VAT, which is the value added tax, but here, which is the Y, that is the value added tax. So remember when you buy, even in a shop, uh, wherever that you're going to go, there is that added tax, value added tax that you, you'll be charged on each and every item. And it's the percentage of the total, okay? This is your total here of uh, 9,000. 965 so this y here is going to be 15 percent from the VAT. so it's 15 over 100 that is what you're going to have in this case uh, VAT, simply 15 percent so whatever uh but VAT, uh that always is 15 uh, percent yeah in our country you know that it's 15 percent guys so it's 15 over 100 times even if you are taking receipts if you buy anything in a shop you check your receipts you see that at the end there they will write that 15 percent yeah they'll write that one i don't know now but it's it's 15 percent yeah, actually it's 15 percent you can't change you can't change that one so it's nine nine six five that's your vet here so guys as usual you have to reduce these values properly um that's what you're going to have and if you reduce this you're going to have something like one nine it's not one nine but one four nine uh four comma five so guys i want to challenge you please can you divide until you get this value can you divide until you get this value okay uh that's what you're going to have in dollars so this is 140 1494 comma seven five dollars all right so that's it then the value of z z is the amount due which is the amount to be paid so you add uh z here is going to be the sub total class the vet okay so z which is the amount due whenever you're dealing with amount uh due it is going to be uh this sub total so it's sub uh total class 
vat which is value added tax okay that's the case so you add the value added tax to the what to the subtotal your subtotal before was 9965 all right so this is 9965 plus the value added tax and this is your value added tax that you calculated at y there which was 1494,75 this is the tax which is which is added the original amount was supposed to be this one but because of the government that needs its own tax and i okay in fact we we'll pay that tax uh, so it's going to give us something like uh, 114 five nine comma uh seven five okay if we add properly guys it's going to be something like this so this is your z here which is the amount due so as you can see guys just imagine from this amount and look what you're paying as a tax which goes to the government not part of the shop not part of the owner but it goes direct to the government that is the added tax that you pay in each and every item that you buy so you must know that guys okay anyways and this part guys as you can see my software does not have these instruments of construction and so forth so it's going to be difficult for me to illustrate this but here we needed the perpendicular bisect of bc so perpendicular. remember you for you to bisect i told you guys you open more than half of the line you construct an arc there an arc there then another arc another arc from c then you join your arcs i think this one i talked about it you can even uh try it uh that is how it's going to be like uh, that is the perpendicular bisect of what of bc uh the line on the same side of bc on the same side of a b as c and is also uh, two centimeters from AB. Two comma zero means two centimeters. That is two comma zero there, which is two centimeters. So they were supposed to be parallel lines, but because uh, we are given that it's on the same side of AB as C, so which means this line is supposed to be on top here above the line. So what you do, you measure two centimeters, okay, from your ruler, you measure two centimeters, then from this part, you construct an arc here. You measure two centimeters, you construct an arc there. Then you join these backs of this arc here, this back here, and this back. Okay, so that's what you are going to do there. Uh, I don't know what you're going to have, but um, that's the illustration that I'm trying to do. Um, I'm, I'm going to say this software, guys, which uses uh, these things so that I, we cannot have problems in the near future but it was supposed to be something of this nature i don't know where exactly it's going to be but can you construct two centimeters okay two centimeters from a you mark an arc on top two centimeters from b you mark an arc on top because it's on the same side where they see okay that's what you're going to have and uh, mark the point x which is two comma zero centimeters from a b and equidistant from b and c so take note equidistant from b and c this is the perpendicular bisector that we did here two centimeters from a b that is what uh the line this parallel line so we are saying where these two meet okay the parallel line and uh the this line that is in blue so i don't know guys are they going to meet here or they are going to meet inside here inside this region like inside this side or they are going to meet outside because of the diagram that i'm having but where these two meet that is where you're going to mark the point that they are calling or that they are referring as what as x so i want you to do that and see if you're going to to win All right so that is the case there that is what you just needed and number 24 solve the equation as you can see guys there's a normal equation what are you going to do uh try and uh apply your basic knowledge of fractions and so forth you can cross multiply isn't it here you can cross multiply guys uh, here these two can multiply each other three times two which is six is equal to x plus two times one is just going to remain as x uh, plus two then transpose the two to this side is going to be six minus two is equal to x so that means x is going to be six minus two which is four just like that so our x in this case that's a four so that's what you're going to obtain uh there which is going to give us a four so that's how they can ask these questions uh, you just need to be very, very familiar with them. Okay, on number 24B, we are now given the function, the f of x, which is x squared plus x. And uh, the first equation is to find f of three. Guys, I told you, whenever you're given function, substitute the values that you're given, all right? f of three simply means in place of x, go and substitute what? Go and substitute three. So that's it. 
So f of three in place of x, I'm going to substitute three here. That is three squared plus three. And uh, three squared, that's three times three, which is nine plus three, which is going to give us 12. So that's it guys, that's your f of three here. All right, so that's your f of three. Then um, the other question is now the values, take note, now you are solving an equation here. The values of, you need to find x this time when f of x is equal to zero. So what does this part mean? It means we are going to equate your f of x here, the one that you had, this was your original f of x, this one, which is x squared plus x. You equate this to zero because you are given that f of x is now equal to zero. So you're going to equate it to zero like that. Okay, now solving your normal equations, you can factor out, factorize here, x is common, so I can factor out x x into x squared, that is x squared divided by x, that's x. x divided by x here, that is a one, which is going to give us a zero here. So from the zero concept, remember from our zero concept, a times b, if it gives you a, a zero, it means a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. That is the zero concept, okay? So b is equal to zero. So that is what it means here, because these two, they are multiplying each other. So it means this x is going to be equal to zero. So x is equal to zero, or it means x plus one must be equal to zero. That is what it means. So x is equal to zero here, or x is equal to minus one to the uh, one to the other side of the equation is going to be a negative one. So it's a zero minus one, which is a minus one. So these are the values of X here. So just writing the answer here, uh, zero and minus one, write the answer just like that, you're done. So that was it guys. So they can even ask this to, maybe they can give you that F of X is equal to three or whatever that you're given. You, you equate your F of X, the one that you're given to that number, then you solve uh, depending with how they have given this equation, but as for this one, they said it's equal to zero. So just, just like that, okay. So you just have to solve that way and you'll be done. Uh, number 25, there's a coin which is biased coin, which was uh, tossed the probability of getting ahead. So this one is an, uh, a biased coin. It's, it's, it's different from an un unbiased one that we know that the probability of uh, a head is one over two, of a coin, of uh, a tail is one over two, which is uh, 0 0,5 uh, or 0 0,5. This one is a biased coin, so it, that is why you see the probability of a head is 0 0,6, which is different from the one that we are, we are expecting to get. Okay, so anyways, uh, definitely we know that these two, they must, give a, uh, they must give us a one. The probability of having a head which is 0, 0,6 and the probability of having a tail. These two, if you add them, they must give you a one. If you add this, they must give you one. So it's the same thing here. The tail one, you're just going to subtract from what? Uh, from one, so it's one minus 0, 0,6, which is 1,0 minus 0, 0,6 here, which is going to be one here and this one. So it's going to be four, uh, zero, one minus one, that's a zero. So it's going to be 0, 0,4. So from this biased coin, to have a tail is 0, 0,4. To have a head, it's 0, 0,6. Okay, now the question on A is to find the probability of getting a tail if it is tossed once. Okay, so that's our tail here. We say it is 0, 0,4, so that's it. Okay, the probability of getting at least one head if it is tossed twice. They, we have got twice here. So what is, whenever you are dealing with twice, it means we can represent this on a tree diagram because this happened twice. So I'm just going to put it this way. This one is a, it's a biased coin. So you can put it on a tree diagram like this. This is your head. This is your tail. Okay, you move on. Another one, that's the second peak, which is your head, your tail, uh, your head and your tail like that. Okay, so this is head. Uh, tail like that. Okay, so the good part about this is that it does not, it's a fixed probability that you're given, which does not change. So when I mean it does not change, it means the probability of a head is what? 0, 0,6. It does not change throughout. So this is your head, which is 0, 0,6, uh, 0, 0,6, uh, 0, 0,6. Whenever there is a head, it does not change. It's, it's a fixed type of a question. Okay. Uh, on tail, we said our tail is 0, 0,4. So whenever there's a tail, 
you are going to have 0, 0,4. Uh, here, that's 0, 0,4, uh, 0, 0,4, uh, 0, 0,4. Okay, so this is 0, 0,4 here, sorry. So now what are you going to have is that you're going to see that these are the outcomes now, head followed by head. So these are your outcomes, head, head, head followed by tail. So this is head, tail, tail followed by head. So this is tail, head, tail followed by tail. So this is tail, tail like that. Okay, so the question is, where are we going to have this part where they're saying the problem of getting at least one head? So whenever there is this word, at least, which means there is H, wherever you see there is H, that is where you're going to take your answer. Wherever you see that there is H, which means you need this answer here, there is H here, there is H here, there is H here. So this is probably for, of getting at least a head. So which means the only part that we are going to skip or the only part that we are going to leave is this one. That is the one that does not have a head. So we are supposed to add the probability of head, head plus the probability of head, tail, okay? Plus the probability of tail, head. These are the outcomes that you're supposed to add. So here you take head and head. This is head and head which is 0 0.6 times uh, 0 0.6, okay? Plus head tail, which is your head followed by tail. This is head followed by tail here, which is 0 0.6 times a tail, which is 0 0.4, all right? Plus we move on to tail followed by head. This is tail followed by head, uh, which is 0 0.4 times 0, 0,6. All right, so that's what you're going to have in this case. So if you are to multiply this, you are going to obtain something like 0, 0,6 times, which is 36. And we've got two decimal places, which is 0, 0,36 plus uh, 6 times 4, which is uh, 24. And we've got two decimal places, which is 0, 0,24. And the last one is going to be 0, 0,24. As you can see, these two are the same. So it's going to be uh, 0, 0,24. Then you add everything, you're going to obtain 0, 0,84. If you add everything properly. Okay, but look at this working that we've done. This is what this is what actually we're supposed to do. But look at the working, guys. How can we minimize this? Okay, we can just take this. Since we need this head, this head, and this head here. And this is the one that is not needed. So we are going to simply find this one because we just have one here. So the probability of the answer that we need is simply going to be one minus the probability of tail tail. Why? Because we know that probability adds up to adds up to one. So all these elements, if we add this and add this and add this and add this, they must give us a one. So since us, we have got a lot of things that we have got here. So let us just calculate the one for tail, tail. Whatever that we get, we subtract from, from one. That was going to be the easiest way that we can do, uh, which is going to be one minus tail, tail, which is 0, 0,4 and 0, 0,4. So it's going to be 0, 0,4 times uh, 0, 0,4, just like that. All right, so we're going to have one minus 0, 0,4 times 0, 0,4 is four times four which is 16, one, two decimal place, so it's going to be 0, 0,16. And if you subtract this from one, 1, 0, 0, 0 minus 0, 0, 0,16, like that, you are going to have the same answer, which is 0, 0,84. So that's what you're going to have. Just cross check, guys, your calculation, are they going to give us 0, 0,84? Okay, that's it, guys. Yes, one, and this is going to be two here. 10 minus six, which is four. Uh, zero minus two is impossible, so we've got one, and this is one, so it's going to be 10 minus two, which is eight, comma, one minus one, which is a zero, yeah, we're going to have the same thing, which is 0, 0,84, 0, 0,84, so that was the easiest way that we could have done, instead of you uh, calculate, yes, we can do that, it's fine, but we can uh, uh, do the easier way, but it's still one and the same thing, actually, so I don't know uh, what was best for you, Okay, then uh, on number C, we are now asked to calculate the expected number of heads. If it is tossed 50 times, how many heads are we going to expect to have? 
Okay, so to calculate the number of heads or its number of tail, whatever that you have, you are going to use the probability of getting a head times the number of times. That is the case, okay? If it was the number of times of getting uh, a tail, okay, I mean the number of tails that you are going to have, you are going to use the probability of getting a tail times the number of times which was what which was used there so that was uh, that is the case so in this case we need to have the number of heads how many heads are we going to have so you simply ask ourselves what is the probability of getting a head to get a head it's 0 comma 6 so to get a head it's 0 comma 6 times how many times are we going to throw out this coin we are going to uh, to toss or to to throw this coin 50 times that is what you do so you multiply by the number of times which is a 50 so that is the case if you multiply this what are you going to have six times zero here that's a zero six times five here which is 30 i mean this small place we have put one decimal place so it's going to be 30 comma zero which is 30 heads so in 50 times we are going to expand or we are going to have 30 heads according to what to this which means if it was the number of tail they can ask you the number of tails which means we are saying the probability of getting a tail which was 0 comma 4 times or 50 times that, that's it guys simple like that simple like that okay so that's how they can uh, actually ask these questions all you need is to know the concept and so forth uh, through revisions of question papers that we'll be doing uh, it can actually help us as we are moving as a family uh, to reach our goal of passing uh, the exams in the later uh, season. Uh, number 26, which is question 26, it is given uh, in the diagram the curve of y is equal to x squared. This is y is equal to x squared, which is the curve and the straight line of y is equal to 8 minus 2x, okay? The question is to calculate the gradient of the line. Okay, write down, in fact, write down the gradient of the line y is equal to 8 minus 2x. We know that once we write our equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus c, m is the gradient. So y is equal to, this is your x here. So it's minus 2x plus what plus a. Just rearrange so that you can properly see your gradient in this case of which our gradient is going to be this part that is affecting x here, which is minus two. So our gradient was going to be a negative two. Okay, that was the gradient of the line. Uh, and we are given to find the equation of the line passing through the origin and parallel to this line. Take note, guys. The line, it passes through the origin. And I told you that on the origin, the coordinates are zero, zero. That is what you have on the, on the origin, okay? So now you are given a point where it is going to pass through the origin and the parallel to this line, which means if they are parallel, they have got same gradient. So which means M, which is your gradient is given. We have the gradient, which is minus two. Okay. So that is it guys. It passes through the origin where we know that it's zero, zero here. So what will be the equation now? We have got the gradient and where it passes and we know that Y is equal to MX uh, plus C where M is the gradient. So M, which is our gradient is minus two X plus c if it passes through zero zero guys zero zero is the origin here zero zero is the origin where x is zero and y is zero so if any line passes through here it means it's uh the y intercept at this point is a zero because it's passing through a point where y is equal to zero so it's going to be plus zero here where y is equal to minus 2x or you can just substitute the point since you know that y is equal to what uh, minus 2x plus c. You can substitute here to find the value of c. You can substitute x, which is 0, y, which is 0, x, y is 0 here. x is also a 0 here. So plus c. So any number times 0, that's a 0. So c is equal to 0. So as you can see, you are obtaining the same value of c, uh, which is a 0, but different ways of doing it. So that's it, guys. Then uh, write down the x coordinate of b. Of oh, sorry, write down the x coordinate of item one, which is a. So we need the x coordinate, not the point, but just the value of x at a. So at a here, we have our a. Okay, so this is our a, guys. If you are to cross check, you draw a line direct, 
straight, straight line, spread, spread, going to the x-axis. At that point, you're going to see that your x is going to correspond with minus four. So that is the value of x. That is what the person is asking. So the x coordinate in this case is a negative four. All right, then the x coordinate of point B, you do the same uh, where there is your point B, here is your B at this point here. So this way we are going to have a B straight into the x axis. Remember, guys, this is your x axis here. So direct into the x axis, you're going to correspond with a two here. That is the value of x. So that was the question. Uh, so our x there is a two. So our x here was minus four and our x here is a two. Then write down the equation in x, whose roots are your answer in B here? What we did here, we obtained the roots, which is minus four and two. Now the question is write down the equation of that line. Okay, I want us to see something here. Uh, at where we took these points, where we've got B and C here, that is where we've got our point of intersection here. This point of intersection, this is a point of intersection of what? Of these two graphs. That is the point of intersection of these two graphs, the straight line and the quadratic uh, graph. And I told you guys, at the point of intersection, the two graphs, they are equal. So that is what we are going to, to take. So we are saying uh, the two graphs are equal, which means y is equal to x squared, uh, the first graph that we had uh, was y is equal to x squared, okay? That is the first graph that we had here. Uh, okay, y is equal to x squared here. And the other one is y is equal to eight minus x, okay? That was the other graph. Y is equal to eight minus two uh, x, not x, but minus two x. So here on B, these solutions that you took, they came from the point of intersection, all right? So if they came from the point of intersection, these two graphs, they are equal there. So if they are equal, you are just going to equate these two, okay? You are going to equate uh, these two here. So we meaning to say x squared is equal to eight minus two x, they are equal. So you formulated an equation, so you can just rewrite, uh, taking all these terms to one side of the equation. So it's x squared minus two x to this side. It's a positive two x, eight to this side, which is minus eight. So that is your equation. The question is not asking you to solve, it's just asking you to write the equation. So that was your equation. And if you solve this equation, you are going to see that your answers are going to be minus four and two. You're going to obtain these two answers here, minus four and two. So what I want you to do, I want you to try uh, this as your own activity. I want you to solve this equation here. I want you to solve this equation, okay? If you solve this equation, you are going to obtain directly these values that you obtained, two and uh, minus four. Okay, so that's one. that one, I want you to try it and see if you are going to obtain uh, the same uh, so that's what you're going to hear. Now, just like that, number 27, you're now given in the question, take pi to be 3.14. A spherical ball is 20 centimeters in diameter. Calculate the surface area of the ball. Okay, so this is a sphere and you're given the surface area already. Everything is there. Uh, so we know that our surface area is given by 4 pi r cubed, 4 pi r squared. So it's 4 times pi of which your pi is always, guys, do not assume just to take any pi of your choice. You use the pi that you are given. Is it 22 over seven? Is it 3,142? Is it 3,14? Whatever you use the value that you're given. So in this case, our pi was 3,14. So you multiply surface area, which is going to be four pi times r squared. So your radius in this case, which is a, uh, uh, in this case, we are given uh, the diameter, which is 20 centimeters. So we need the radius here, where we know that radius is diameter over two. So it's going to be diameter over two, which is 20 over two, which is uh, 10 centimeters. So this is your radius. So it's radius squared, which is 10 squared. Okay, so that's it, guys. It's going to be four times three comma one, four times uh, 100 in this case. So here you can simply multiply by 100, which is one, two. So you are going to be left with four 
times three, one, four. Okay, so if you multiply this properly, uh, let's see what are we going to have at the end. It's going to be something like one, two, five, six. So this is one, two, uh, five, six uh, square centimeters. That's it. Okay. So that's your surface area and the volume of the ball to the nearest whole number. Okay. So we need the volume and we are given the formula for the volume whereby volume is now four over three pi r cubed. So that's going to be four over three times pi, which is our pi does not change three comma one, four times r cubed, which is this case is 10 times 10, remember you have got now uh, your radius, which is 10. And this is, uh, guys, if you multiply this, I want you to do this and simplify, you're going to obtain something like four, one, eight, six, comma, uh, six, it's gonna repeat like that, six, 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 and so forth. And if you round off to the nearest whole number, that is what they mean here to the nearest whole number, that is this whole number here, eight is going to seven, six is going to change this into a seven, so it's going to be 4187 uh, cubic centimeters. So this is your volume, guys, in a cubic centimeters, just like that. Okay, it will be done. And um, let's see, uh, where is the other question? Guys, there's another question that is actually missing. You see these things of scanning these papers, guys. When you scan these papers, make sure that you've got everything because I think there was another question which is not actually here. But according to this, guys, that's what we had. Uh, that's the end of it. So that's it, guys, from Amazon African Motives. So all we need, guys, is that let us revise as much as we can. We do not have uh, time. So please do revise as much as you can uh, your question papers uh, using your YouTube and so forth. And uh, also for anything, guys, let us feel free to talk about that matter uh, on this uh, number here, which is 86 uh, plus 6186. 4043 guys i'm forgetting my number now okay so anyways yeah let me know the comment uh, on your comment there uh, let us talk uh, that's it guys from amazon african motives till we meet 